Australopithecus evolved by eating the fruit of knowledge. This knowledge allowed it to think and plan, ensuring the survival of its species. And in turn, Australopithecus evolved into Homo erectus. Homo erectus could use tools and fire and form villages and settlements. Now, let's birth Homo erectus very well, Navi. Welcome everyone, welcome back to Birthdays The Beginning, where our land has expanded so much. And along with that, probably the temperature is all kinds of messed up. Yeah, it's tending towards 31 degrees. Uh, that isn't actually as bad as I was expecting, I'll be perfectly honest. Most of our dinos can probably survive in that kind of temperature. We're probably not going to be seeing any more being born in that kind of temperature, though, except for possibly a couple of really awesome ones, like mammoths. Uh, it's going to be grand, though, as before, there's probably a load of stuff for us to collect. Now, my plan for this episode is not to do a huge wallop of building and sculpt the whole land in one go, because honestly, with this much of an expansion, and because I have to keep pausing to generate energy and things, half of the species in the world would have gone extinct by the time I finished with even the smallest bit of re-sculpting. So I think we'll do it in small chunks as we go along. You know, let's, let's, uh, let's work smart, not hard. Well, we should probably work both. Work hard and smart and get a million things done at once. And then everyone will praise you and think you're awesome. Uh, I, I think that's how it works. I've never really tried, so you'll just have to let me know. Right, let's uh, head up. Where are you? There's something up there. There we go. Now, you will be the third tier warming stone, I think. The scorch stone. How, uh, how ominous sounding. And we've got something all the way over there as well. Let's go and grab you. Ah, uh, this will be the... Well, we've got the chill stone, the ice stone. The freeze stone, perhaps, because scorch freeze. That would make sense, I think. Hello. What be you? You are the freestone. <laughs> I was correct. I like being right. Uh, okay, well, let's head down and grab... I'm going to assume that this is going to be another glass jar. I'm going to assume that... Oh, I love it down here so much. Why can't we build, like, underground labyrinthine complexes? Why can't we all just live underground in caves? Warm ourselves from the heat of Mother Nature, the heart of the planet, keeping us warm and cozy. Uh, okay, so... First and foremost, let's have a quick look. Oh, hello. At uh, what we've got. We've got uh, a Tyrannomimus, a Plesiosaur. Should we go for a long neck? Should we go for a long neck or a, or a raptor? I think a, a raptor, really, considering that's the food of the Tyrannosaur. Yep. Let's stick you in there. There we go. Some Tyrannosaurs eating you right now, probably. Right, okay, so. Let's have a quick, quick gander at what we're going to need to do to complete our next step of the journey. So, Homo erectus we need to go and have a look at. Uh, over here, uh, what have we got there? More monkeys. Ooh, you need to be very cold, my lord. Uh, okay, so a super low birth temperature. We can probably hit that more or less right now, I would say. If we use our freeze stone... We can probably hit that straight away. We may lose a couple of things in the doing of, though. Um, let's not go OTT, though. Let, let's, let's actually be a little bit more sensible about this. Because as that temperature drops, then this is going to be more than enough to chill this area. Because by the time it's 31, this will chill this area to 11. We'll lose some of the species there, in fact. Uh, so let's move it across a little bit. If some of the species that are just over on that side die as a result, that is terribly sad. But they, they're probably capable of adapting to those kinds of temperatures, so it's okay. Now then, while we're here, let's go ahead and, and shape a little bit more, shall we? I'm going to do this outside of a time lapse, because I don't intend to do a huge chunk of shaping. Actually, one thing that uh, a couple of people have asked me about is using the abilities. You, you no doubt have noticed me using them in the time lapses here and there, and I actually think that they're very, very important to use. Yet you've been given them for a reason, and that reason is to save yourself some time. Trust you me. Uh, right, let's pop this one down there. Oh, glorious, Insta Mountain, a mountain in a jar. And uh, we will use this to rise these lands a little bit. I'm just gonna use this to be super lazy and save myself a lot of time having to shift all of this around. And then I can just smooth it out and sculpt it as I see fit. And that is a good, good, good way 
of making some very rapid progress with your terraforming. Uh, ooh, it doesn't seem to want to take it any higher than that. That's interesting, okay. Uh, so there's a, a very... Uh, very modest upper limits to how high those things will go. Right, well, uh, bearing that in mind then, first we need to sculpt a bit more of the land so that we've got a, a nice big area. Now, uh, what I'm thinking is it would be lovely to have some super cool areas up here. Now, the only problem is we are chilling the world quite aggressively as we're doing all of this work. So we may need to uh, also compensate by adding a wee bit of... Um, uh, extra water around just to help out. I've got enough recovery items that I could do all of this in one go but as I've mentioned previously I do want to uh, uh, This is a this is an aside actually it's just a thought that crossed my mind. I do want to have this being a bit of an island So how about we? Uh, drop some of the te the uh, land around here since we were just talking about it anyway Let's uh, drop some of the land at the very edges there into uh, Sea, well, shallow seas somewhere around there. Uh, right, we're going to want. Sure, let's use you. Bump. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, now, what we're going to need are our recovery items. Uh, this one's a pretty, pretty strong one, I believe. This is the new one that we've got, and it's a full heal. Very well, very, very strong, very strong indeed. I would like to try and keep the temperature around the sort of thirty. 235 is the global temperature that is if we can do that then I'm fairly certain that a lot of our animals will be able to survive in those temperatures so that's the first thing it, whenever you make any kind of drastic change especially if you're getting carried away like I do in sculpting make sure you address the temperature differences that you've caused because building a mountain does a big big bit of changing to the uh, global temperatures and you don't want to suddenly kill off loads of your precious species because you were a little bit too excited and uh, were making happy little trees and happy little mountains everywhere. Uh, as much as that is a, a, a worthy goal to aspire towards, don't, don't be the sort of person that sacrifices all of the other life just because you want to make something look nice. That's not dapper. That's never dapper. Uh, let's see. Only in, when it is, it is dapper. But shh, don't let anyone know I said that. Uh, right. I think at this point we can start sculpting a little bit around here. Now, the way I like to sculpt large areas like this is using the um, Raise Similar Land um, button just to make the place a little bit less regular because currently the slope's very smooth but extremely regular. And that is something that we desperately want to avo uh, avoid, or at least something I desperately want to avoid. When you're moving around, it happens a lot. Um, I've not noticed the way to move fast enough to prevent that regularity from occurring. But uh, we'll be doing a lot of work around the place as well to uh, fix all of this up. But for the now, just uh, every now and then, just hold down the buttons and uh, try to rise or lower land. And you'll create a much, much less uh, even and uniform experience. And then every now and then, just also pop around. I find I do... I, Still, quite a lot of sculpting with the uh, smallest brush size. That probably takes me the largest uh, increase to the amount of time that I spend sculpting is doing these little bits. Where I'm just changing things a little bit here and there. Just a tiny bit. Uh, let's sink this down. Oh no, actually. Uh, that was up. Sink it down. And then pull that down a little bit there. Okay, we're starting to make this place look a little bit better. It's still way too uniform but we're getting there um sink that down a little bit i mean 29 is not a bad temperature for us to be at right now i don't think i think we can manage that now one of the other things to bear in mind and it's something that i found myself getting um trapped by um a lot when i first started sculpting in this game is thinking that well reacting to how uniform it looks when it's barren Understand that once plants start growing here, this place is going to start looking chaotic and organic very quickly, just by itself. A lot of the uh, nice features of the land are achieved by having things growing there. So don't get too obsessed. I know this coming from me is a bit, a bit rich, but uh, don't get too obsessed with shaping and trying to avoid the uniformity when it's just all barren. You need things to grow before you can really get a sense 
of how it's going to look. At least until you've had some practice. After a little while, even when it's barren, you can sort of see what it's going to look like when it's all covered in green. So, uh, you, you know, it, your mileage may vary, as is always the case with these sorts of things. Uh, let's just sink that down a little bit, raise it up. Sometimes, just sinking an area down, changing the brush size to one size smaller, and then raising things up, will give you an amazing result. I hope, I hope no one minds that this episode is a lot about me giving tips on how to sculpt, and much less me sculpting. Uh, right over here. Let's sink that down a little bit. Um, sure, let's, let's put that there. I think I, I, I do kind of uh, switch into tutorial mode very quickly. I, I, like to, I like to share my experiences. I think it's as much because I find it interesting, the, the experience of learning itself. Like, I'm, I find it kind of intriguing the way I come to, to, to learn certain things. Um, so <laughs> I make the mistake of assuming everyone else will as well. That is not always the case. No, no. Uh, we want to sink this down but there, just to make that look a little bit nicer. Um, temperature's actually starting to get into a nicer position now. Eventually, this will wrap all the way around the island, is my thoughts. That's where I want to put everything. Ooh. Okay, we'll grab another one of you. There we are. Not bad so far. I'm already starting to uh, see the way this is going to look. Um, sure, we can connect this up. We can make this uh, a shallow area. And then everything further on is going to be this vast sea. It'll get deeper and deeper the, the closer to the edge it gets. And that is going to be amazing. I may not do too much more sculpting here, though. We've got the temperature starting to recover a bit. And I've got a lot more work to do on the mountain for now. There we go. I may do some of that in a time lapse, but not straight away. Because I do want to get to uh, pass in a little bit of time as well. I'm eager to see what will what will develop without me doing too much to try and preserve what's already there. Because there, there's beauty in chaos, in my opinion. There's, there's quite a lot of beauty in chaos. It's well, something I learned uh, when I was doing art a lot in school. And then when I did it myself later on, just for, for my own personal enjoyment. There we go. Wonderful. And we'll just do a little bit more around here. One thing I've noticed that really does tend to uh, make an area of shallows kind of look really very nice. It's just a, little, a couple of, it's almost like potholes under, under the uh, surface of the water. You don't want them too too often because then it, then it diminishes the effect. But they do seem to have quite a, quite a reasonable effect for very little time investment. So something like that, for example, and then uh, maybe make this side a little bit deeper again, and then just a little bit of shaping along, just to to make it look less less like we painted it with box brushes, even though that's exactly what we did. A lot of this is just trickery. We're just trying to convince someone that we didn't do things the way we did them. Uh, right, and yeah, sure, we can bring that up there, and maybe sink that a little bit down. There we are. Maybe sink that bit down too. Okay, so a little bit more to do on the mountain, perhaps. That side is starting to look really nice, I think. Um, let's see. So we want to, once again, just go through every now and then, just using the uh, raise tool or the lower tool, as the uh, case may be. You can, in fact, switch between them randomly, and it'll probably give you a quite a nice effect overall. Uh, there we go. And something around here. In fact, I'm going to... Uh, Use this one just while I'm moving, just to create a little bit more chaos in it. There we are. And now we get to actually adjusting what we've got. Now, the problem up here is it does look very, very chaotic. Like these little dips and troughs. We want to try and avoid those where we can. A, a little pothole here and there is fine. When you've got like long trenches carved, that, that kind of breaks the flow of the terrain in my opinion. And I'm not a huge fan of just having these uh, kind of spires just rising out of nowhere. Not all the time, but one or two, especially at the peak of a mountain, is quite nice, I think. But you can very easily overdo that, in my opinion. Uh, there we are, that's quite nice. Make sure it makes it, it makes sense, like moving up along the corners, because I like to round the corners a little bit, or give them a, a bit of a softer edge, at the very least. And something like that, yeah, sure. Now, later on, we're going to be adding in 
some waterfalls, and that will help to break this up even more than it already is. Uh, but for now, I think we're probably at a point where I can say we've done enough shaping, and we can go and just watch what time has in store for this land. There we are. Yeah, there's still a lot more work to do, but this may start looking really nice as things uh, start uh, to grow over here. I'm just going to lower that a little bit down, because that seems like an odd bit of a, a spike there. And something along here as well, just to break it up a bit. Okay, I'm done. I, I will force myself to be done. Let's go. Let's go and watch what happens. We should be okay. And time to pass some time. Oh, unfortunately, our first, our first extinction, our second extinction. How many extinctions will we go before we get a birth? Any? Okay, let's speed up time a little bit more. We have got a lot of things about to go extinct. Ah, uh, Tyranno Minimus is, is on its way out. Yeah, that's quite a shame. Yep. Oh, we've got one! Finally! Let's go and say hello. Tyranno Minimus is not near enough to where it's now cold. Uh, are you? Hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's just check, because your population's going up from the last time I saw it. Uh, I know, I know there's something new that I need to go and have a look at, but first... Um, 15 to 20. I mean, here is not cold enough. You would do better over here, I think. Um, I could perhaps just move this stone over a little bit more. But I like this area back here. This is a really, really nice temperature for most of the stuff that I want. We'll see. Um, but we've got a new friend to welcome. And it is over here. Uh, judging by the names, probably... Uh, an olive tree, I'm gonna guess. Let's have a look at you. Yes, olive trees that grow in wide regions along with broad leaved trees. They appeared as Canis Dirius were increasing in number very well. Okay, well, that's good enough for us for now. Let's head out again and pass a little bit more time and let's hope that uh, Tyranno Minimus does not die, but eh, it's probably gonna happen. Oh, we've got two new creatures. I think one of them, though, is a plant. Let's have a quick peek around here. What have we got? We've got something around here. Where are you? Hello? Hello? Where be you? I've gone past you, haven't I? I have no idea where you are. I, I wish it was a little bit easier for us to find creatures that are new, but there's something right around here. There you are. What be you? You be? I think it's an animal, actually. Oh, yes. The grey wolf travels in packs across cold lands. It appears as Canisterius and Boss were propagating on land, and Scombrini populated the seas. I don't think we've actually got those yet, but okay. I'm down with that. Hello over here. We're seeing some greenery start to sprout up. Oh, this place is... Oh, it's turning into a desert. I'm kind of pleased with that, actually. I think it looks very nice. Okay, what we got here? We have got uh, B. longifolia, a plant that grows in cool deserts that um, des uh, sorry, the Seropteris could not adapt to. That was a bit of a tongue twist. I had to really focus on that one before I tried to say it. Um, we could have, I mean, I don't really want this to be a desert because I, I kind of like a lot of other things to grow here. Uh, maybe. Maybe that's just what its destiny is. Who am I to argue with destiny? Okay, well, let's let a little bit more time pass. Ooh, 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 we've got two new things. Two new things. One of them is a bird. I'm fairly certain. Where are you, little bird? Why are you not showing up? Why are you not showing up, little bird? Please show yourself. There's no way you died already. There is no notification of your immediate demise. Scallywags, where are you? We've got things here that are not showing up. Okay, well, let's shrink the map. Maybe, maybe there's something new and we can see it. No, I, I cannot see it. That is, that is super frustrating. Um, okay, one is a fish. But maybe, oh, maybe it's something that we've already had before. 
Yes, that could be it. The things are just like, oh, the, the temperature is perfect for us now. Okay, let, let's go down. We've got Ursus. Sp oh, I, I already know from Ursus what this is going to be. Where are you, my wonderful? Oh, this is going to be great. Uh, is it by the Tyrannosaur? Will it ride the Tyrannosaur? Can I get it a saddle? Ah, oh, new item added to bucket list. Make a bear ride a Tyrannosaur. Uh, oops, that was the wrong button, my lord. Sorry, sorry, I was, I was too excited imagining bears riding on Tyrannosaurs. I'm sure you can all appreciate that that, that is completely an awesome thing to imagine and understand why I was, I was faffing around with all the wrong buttons. Far too excited. A bear that lives on co cool climates, uh, sorry, lives on cool climates. It lives on cool climates. It eats the cold on a diet of leaves and grass. It appeared as Andrew Sarkis and Canis Durius were propagating. Very well. Let's have a look. Oh, you know what? Do I have... <laughs> I do. Very well. Come here. Come here, monkeys. Where are you? Um, let's look for primates. Where's my ancestor? I need to find my ancestor so I can mutate it. Where are you? I would totally mutate my own ancestor, by the way. If I, if I had the ability to go back in time, I'm, I'm not being unfair here. I would 100% for science my my own ancestors. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but if you're not willing to do it yourself, you shouldn't be allowed to do it at all. Um, where, where is... I do not see them. They've scarpered. They knew what was coming. Ah, uh, damn my ancestors for being so clever. Please tell me I've still got some, though. I may not. They may have already really gone extinct. They're like, nope, 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 nope. Not hang around for this. Nope. How many? How many of you there are there? Uh, if there are any of you at all, and there's loads of you. So where are you? Where Where are you hiding? Scallywag. It's got to be over here because this is the only place that's cool and well. Actually, no. There's a lot of places that are now habitable by you. It's just it's more likely that you would be around here because this is a temperature you'd enjoy. But. Um, there's a monkey, there's two monkeys, but where's the monkey that walks on two feet? Mm, I don't know. You give you give them a fruit of knowledge and suddenly they think they're their own boss. And they go off and do their own things. Aha! Caught you, you scamp. Now, let me mutate you. No, no, come back. There we go. This won't hurt. I promise. I, I'm, I'm doing this in a very humane way. There's there's no needles or anything. I'm I'm just I'm just slapping you. Well, actually, no. We need the seed of evolution to go down the tree, don't we? That would only move across. Ah, uh, it's probably not going to do any good. Never mind. It was fun to do anyway. Ah, uh, we're losing many many dinos. Many many dinos. Oh my lord! So many things are going to just die. Alrathi is gone. So many things have just died. Oh no. The Gigabrachio is gone. Well, the temperature has gotten finally too too hot. Ah, uh, that that makes me sad. Uh, sorry, too cold. That makes me super sad, actually. Mega sadness. Ah, <sighs> the blue spotted long neck has has perished. Moment of silence, if you will. Okay, moment of silence is over. What have we got down here? Um, is it you? No, it's not you. Uh, maybe a fish over here, perhaps? What is it? Is it one of you down here? Yes, it is, actually. All the way down the bottom. What have we got? We have got uh, the Colacanthus that lives in, the cold, in cold waters of the deep sea. It mainly feeds on Culpia. I'm not even sure if we've got any more of those left. I think they may have gone extinct. Sorry, your food source is no longer here. You may be about to die. We've got a new kind of seaweed, it looks like. A seaweed that is adapted to life in warm seawater. It has all but replaced uh, Colonia. Very well. And finally, up over here someplace, we've got new types of fish. Marvellous. A saltwater fish that differentiated from Leptolepis and propagated throughout the shallows. Ooh, we've got a new size of brush. Oh, fantastic. Just in time for me to do loads of sculpting. 
Ah, uh, I approve. I approve enormously. This will be good times for us. Um, uh, we collected all of the stuff around here. There we go. There's one, and there's the other. Okay. Right, well, let's head back out and let a little bit more time pass. And we'll see what happens next. Ooh, see familiaris. Let's go and have a look at you, shall we? Where are you? You're all the way over here. You are... <laughs> I can kind of already see what that is from up here. I think uh, we will be fairly happy in, in the comments. We finally got the, the domesticated dog, not the giant one that would be more likely to eat us than, than serve us. This is actually a fairly rare creature, as it happens. The domesticated dog, it lived in wide grassy plains. As Australopithecus multiplied, the species truly thrived once humans started domesticating them. Very well. Very well. Look at the deserts forming. These, these cold, or, or in some places hot, but mostly... No, actually, they're not particularly cold. They're just uh, places where vegetation has grown, but then moisture has receded. So, we're going to find a load of them up here. Uh, well, actually, not that many. We'd need a little bit of moisture to uh, propagate that greenery before anything else happened. Um, how's the temperature over here, though? We need to see what kind of temperature we've got. It's very, very cool. Very cool indeed. Right. Well, what do we need? Um, 15 degrees-ish. Moisture of 10 to 60%. Australopithecus have appeared previously. Yep. Uh, Canis lupus familiaris. Uh, okay. Oh, and at least 127. That, hmm. Do you mean 127,200 or 1,272,000? Because <laughs> slight difference in numbers there. Very slight. We've only got 2,000 of them so far. Okay. Let's have a quick gander. What is their preferred um, habitat? Or rather, conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, we've got quite a few, actually. We could possibly mutate you and to see what we can get over there. Yeah, let's have a look at you. Let's uh, drop down and see the mutation straight away, shall we? Womp. There you go. Now, this place is a little bit too cold now, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to swap this one out for this one. There we are. Uh, see, it's now not cold enough. Hmm. Well, actually, I think we're probably all right. Like, up here, it's getting quite cool. In fact, it's getting snowy up there. Fantastic. What are the temperatures around here? We're bound to have decent temperatures around here. Hmm, actually, not as good as I would have wanted. I'll be honest. We need to cool the land even more than we already have. Hmm. That is going to be a bit of a, a challenge. But first, we're going to plop down... A wee, um, where are you? No, not water of life. We want a river source. Right there. There we go. And now we're going to sculpt that out over this side. There, uh, there we go. And down here as well. Something like this. Womp. And I think we're just going to have this one reach back around and... Oops, let's uh, rise that up so that it actually becomes a river. And this one can go down the side over here. There we go. And we'll make this one fairly a fairly broad waterfall, I think. Um, actually, what we can do... Ooh, that's a little bit too large. Let's rise that up, drop it down. There we go. And then we've got instant lake. Lake, I said. Not not instant instant waterfally river. No, just a lake. Just want a little bit of something there. Because this will propagate quite a lot of moisture around. And that will help the, uh, the, the other uh, areas start to get a little bit more green. As uh, so we're over here... Hmm. Yeah, sorry, but you're going to have to get covered in water. I'm not sure you're going to like it, frankly. But uh, it's, it's good for you, I promise. For reals promises... Uh, let's have a little bit of land separating that bit. And then this, this part can just flow down. We'll just follow the land all the way down into this little pit. There we go. Quite, quite organic, that part. Uh, right, now we want to make a fairly large lake over here, I'm going to say. There we go. That should be nice. 
Uh, in fact, we can have this one draining in there as well. Oh, that's fantastic. I like it. Uh, that'll give us a little bit of moisture there for now. I wouldn't mind possibly rising the temperature around here even more. But for the time being, let's just go ahead and increase the moisture in this area. We'll go with the excess rain cloud. Womp. And then large rain cloud. Womp. And finally, small rain cloud. There we go. I should take care of all of that. Now let's let vegetation cover that mountain uh, while we pass a little bit more time. Ooh. So many things are dying. Oh man, this episode is going to be <laughs> so rough. So rough on those who are trying to keep up with all of the eulogies. That's why I'm leaving the deaths in though, because I've already been told off that I keep hiding the deaths. And then, uh, not that I am hiding them, but uh, then people don't know... Uh, don't know who to write eulogies for. I, I can understand that, certainly. Right, let's have a look at you then. What be you? You be can, uh, Canis familiaris that is adapted to surviving in extremely cold climates. They tag along with humans and protect them. Oh, lovely. Another um, seven star um, rarity. How are we doing over here? What's your population at this point? Hmm. Still fairly low. Still fairly low. Not too happy about that, but we'll have to see. Not sure what we can do to increase that. Oh no, they're already dead. Our loyal cold weather canine has has, has failed. It is it is now dead. Very sad. Very sad. Oh, we have got a new species, along with yet another thing dying. Uh, it's no, no small wonder I'm getting so much water of extinction, really, the amount of things that are perishing as the temperature changes so drastically. Uh, hello, where be you, and what be you? More to the point. Uh, is that you? No, that is not you. Mm, what is it I'm looking for? Is it this grass? No. Oh, it's you. Hello. What, a, what have we got here, then? You've got... A trilobite that adapted to warm climates that are unsuitable for Elrathia. It can be found among Codium Fragile. Uh, let's actually have a look at you then. What are you? And where are you on this? Are you what we need to try and get? No. Insects. Uh, elsewhere, I think. Oh, no. Actually, yeah. You lead to insects. <gasps> Fantastic. We're going to have insects, everyone. It's going to be grand. Um. Fortunately, the seas are probably a little bit too too warm now, uh, too cold now rather. Well, actually, only twenty six degrees. Hmm. Can I find one of you and mutate you? Let's have a very close look. It's going to be hard to spot one of these. We're going to give it a try, and then if we are successful, we're going to be wrapping up this episode. In fact, even if we're not successful, we're going to be wrapping up this episode because it's going getting on now. Uh, there we are. Perfect. Fantastic. Let's uh, go ahead and mutate you. Womp. Enjoy. Enjoy. I'm sure you will. Uh, you know what? We've got a couple of valley sources. Sure. Let's uh, pop down another valley source over here as well. There we are. And of course, now we need to do a little bit of sculpting to remodel this. There we go. And uh, just adjust it. Few little spots here and there. That just looks really weird. There we are. And actually, that doesn't look nearly as bad as it did only moments ago. That has helped a lot, though. Okay, right. I think that's more or less where we're going to be wrapping up this episode for today. Let's uh, pull that down a little bit. We'll just let a little bit of time pass, see if maybe. We can get another species before we wrap things up. Domesticated dog is up to 118,000 now. There we go! Fantastic! We actually managed to get it in time before we wrap the episode up there. Homo erectus has been born! Happy birthday! We're getting closer to humans! I'm not sure that's a good thing for the planet. The next life form is ancient humans. They developed speech and written language. With those tools, they formed large villages. Over time, those villages grew large enough to become cities. And eventually, 
nations. If Homo erectus multiply, they'll naturally become ancient humans, but that's not quite that simple. They need to be safe and live in a hospitable environment with lots of food. Observe the animals and plants that are thriving in the area and create a wide area that, uh, with the correct temperatures. Keep that in mind as you experiment. Well, we're going to have a lot of things to check out in the next episode, but first and foremost, let's go and find you. Oh, you, you did, where, did you settle right here? Where have you, where have you settled? Really? Up here? I would have no problem with that if you decide to settle on the side of a snowy mountain. In fact, I think that would be glorious. I really hope you... No, you haven't. Uh, that's scuppered my plans then. My hopes and dreams dashed. But I think you may have settled somewhere around here. Uh, a little bit to the side. But there we are! Hello! Just on the side of a mountain. Ah, oh, that's not a great place for you to be. I'll be honest, not the greatest. However... Looks like we're going to be getting some use out of this mountain then. We're going to have to rise it till it matches about the same height that uh, she's currently perched on. Um, though she'll be able to, to exist in uh, a bit of a broader range of temperatures. But it looks like the mountain is going to be their home. And I'm a little bit happy about that, actually. I was hoping that the mountain would become home to something. I was thinking mammoths, but humans is fine as well. Primates that formed villages and used fire and tools, they emerge as Australopithecus and Canis familiaris propagated in groups. They can hunt other carnivores. There we go. What a fantastic place to wrap up this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed them. We'll be joining me for the next, and we can probably expect at least a fair bit of sculpting in that episode, because I'm going to have to do quite a lot to rise this up to the necessary temperature, or rather um, altitude, and flatten it out large enough for our ancient ancestors to be able to build their villages and have lots of animals and things to eat. Animals to domesticate, animals to hunt, plants to domesticate, plants to, well, you don't really hunt plants. Not unless you really dislike vegetation. Then you might hunt them. But either way, well, that's going to be it from me. So, as ever, remember to like if you liked and sub if you haven't, and I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.